Hi there, I'm Shane from GardeningWorldConnection.com. Today we're going to talk about what you can put in your compost pile. Compost is made up of nitrogens and carbons, and you need a good mix of that, and there's different ratios for that. And there's a whole uh, another discussion on that, so just, if you want some more information, just jump on the website and have a look. But just quickly today, we're going to go through what we call greens and browns. So here we have what's uh, our kitchen scraps bin, and in here, anything that, that, we, that we eat, uh, in terms of like what's been in the ground, what comes out of the ground, we can we can use. So eggshells, um, banana skins, apple cores, tea bags, uh, what do we got there? Sweet corn husks, just generally anything that you can that you've got there in terms of veggies and fruits and stuff like that can go in there. If you're short on kitchen kitchen scraps there, what we can do here is we can visit uh, our local supermarket, our veggie store, and they quite often have a waste bin where people are peeling the outer layers of things and they take them home for their pets. So this is what this bag here is. So in here what have we got? Rotten apple, broccoli that's gone to seed, you know, sweet corn there, rotten orange. So, you know, that's a good source of greens if you don't have a lot in your own kitchen. You can also use things like, you know, cereals, bread, um, pasta, things like that, they're all fine. My wife and I love going to the coffee shop, and the coffee shop, obviously, has a lot of coffee grinds left over. So, oh boy, does that smell good. It really does smell very, very good. So that's really fine, I'll just show you here, it breaks up really nicely, and that's a great addition to your compost pile. A lot of people have grass clippings, that's the bulk of it for most people, so that's great, that puts in there, it breaks down really, really well, the worms love that, so just continue to put heaps of grass clippings in there. You can use your weeds as well, just make sure to de-head them so you're not spreading your weeds. If you've got flowers, if you're trimming those, if you've, if you've been given cut flowers or something, you know, just feel free to put all those in there. One of the things you can use is manures, sheep, uh, sheep, horses, pigs, and in poultry, what I've got here in this pile here is horse manure, and I get that from a friend of mine who's got a couple of horses. The worms really, really love that manure. It does have a little bit of ammonia, it can be a little bit strong, but that's why you're mixing your, your browns and your greens together. Uh, what else we've got? You can use citrus, just don't use a lot of it, just use a wee bit of citrus, that'll be fine. What not to put in there, as I said, you can use manures, but don't use your cat and dog droppings, that's not a good thing. Uh, avoid meat and bones. If you don't want to use fish, what I would suggest with that is to dig a hole and bury it. And obviously the nutrients will go in there, but you'll avoid the smell and the flies, and also any vermin that might be attracted by that. So that's pretty much your greens. We'll get into your browns. Newspaper and cardboard uh, is, a, is a lot of that. If you're using newspaper on cardboard, you need to make sure that you tear it up, rip it up. If you layer it flat, then it's going to smother it and it's going to stop the compost pile working properly. So for example, this is shredded paper. Um, this is handy towel paper. If you're in the kitchen, use handy towels. Just scrunch that back up. You can throw that in there. If I was using this cardboard box, I'd want to rip it up and then just scrunch it up, get it in there. Don't want to layer it flat, like I said, and some other things. Uh, toilet rolls are fine. What else we can use is... Uh, this is straw. Straw is really, really good. It's bulky. Uh, it breaks down really good. It allows a lot of air space to get in there. Uh, this bag here came from a local farming store, so there's a cost to that. Uh, if you don't have access to it, then I guess that's the only other way you're going to be able to get it. One of the one of the cool things you can use that nature provides for you is leaves, tree leaves. Now we don't have a lot of leaves uh, at home here, but we do have a park that's just a few minutes down the road and it's autumn at the moment and the oak trees and the maple trees are losing their leaves so we've picked up these three bags and that'll we'll use those over the next few months to bulk up our our compost pile to offset our greens and that'll just save me having to go out and, and get another bale of straw from the farming store if you are using cardboards and papers uh, avoid the ones that have the, the, the real glossy magazines, things like that. They use a lot of chemicals and a lot of dyes and stuff to create those pages. Uh, so stay away from those. 
So just quickly, you've got your kitchen scraps, you've got your coffee grinds, your grass clippings, your flowers, you've got your manures, that's your greens, your browns, you've got your shredded paper, toilet rolls, handy rolls, handy towels, things like that, cardboard boxes, straw, and leaves. So that's what you can use in your compost pile. For more of a breakdown of that and for a full list of that, then visit the website. I've been Shane at GardeningWorldConnection.com. See you next time.